Did you ever ask yourself why enums do not exist in Go or even what enums are? Well, it is clear that Golang does not have a built-in enum type like other languages such as Java or TypeScript, but somehow it does as well. That's why I will teach you everything you have to know about enums in Golang in this video. So let's just first clarify what even an enum is. Well, it is a kind of user-defined data type that kind of restricts a variable to predefined constants. And these constants are typically named in a clear and really descriptive way. So that in the end, you have a lot of advantages when you want to use enums in Golang instead of, for instance, raw numbers. So reading the numbers one and two, for instance, cannot be really descriptive. Right? And you probably don't even know what these numbers mean in the context of your code. However, reading accepted and pending is really descriptive, right? And you have kind of a sense on what these things even mean. The other advantage is reducing errors. Obviously, you prevent certain typos or incorrect values associated with these raw numbers, right? So that's enough theory. Let's just get into the code here. All right, so I first want to demonstrate how we can actually define enums in Golang. I want to show you two examples and then we are going to look at a more real world use case. So the first thing would be obviously how to declare enums in Go. Right? And we can use the const keyword here. And obviously you can define a group of constants, right? With these parentheses, but you can also declare just a simple constant like this, right? This would also work. So for instance, a use case would be to just have pi here, right? Which is 3.1415 something, right? This would be a certain use case for declaring constants, in this case pi. However, we want to declare multiple constants. And this is a typical way to describe, okay, this is now an enum. So what we can do is say pending, right? and then we say iota. Right? And then we'll maybe say also accepted right? and refused. Right, and now we've actually declared an enum, which is pretty cool. So we got in this enum three possible values, right? Pending, accepted, and refused. And we've only assigned the first one with this iota, right? So first, what does iota mean? So this keyword is typically used in constants, and you can use this keyword to generate a sequence of numbers for your constants, right? So for instance, iota typically starts with zero. So pending will be zero, accepted will be one, and refused will be on automatically two. So we can make use of iota to kind of say, okay, start at zero, and then whenever we add a new constant, just add one, right? So like I said, accepted is one, refuses two, and the other keyword, which is say other or unknown, is then three. Now, obviously, we can add operations here as well. So we can say iota times two, for instance, right, if really needed. So in the end, we say zero times two, right, which is pending, which in the end is zero. Then we have accepted is equal to one times two, right? So this iota keyword is kind of like an index iterator. All right, so this is how we can actually define an enum. Now, to use this, it's pretty easy. We can just say fmt.println, for instance. And then we say pending, right? And this is basically it. So we can just make use of this enum, right? Inside of our real code base. All right, so let's get rid of this and let's demonstrate quickly the other example here. So another pretty common use case would be to declare a type alias. And let's just say status, which in the end is a string, right? So with this line, we just want to kind of create a type mm -hmm. alias, which in the end resolves into a string, right? This gives us like a more descriptive way what these strings are. So what we could do is just say pending, right? Then we say status and then we say pending. So in the end, this pending enum value is now a status and it contains the string value pending, right? This does also work with enums here. Obviously we can say accepted, and then status, and then we say accepted, right? Obviously this works with a lot of values for these enums, and clearly the status needs to be written correctly as well. But I think you now get the idea of what enums really are, right? In the end, these enums in your code base in Golang are pretty much just variables or constants that are defined, right? And you can use them across your code base. So with that in mind, we can now have a real world use case here. Okay, so let's just create a simple use case, which would be a packet analyzer. 
Now, obviously, this is a really simplified packet analyzer, right? So the primary function is just to analyze and decode the raw packets that come in into your network and then kind of make sense of it, right? So what is like the source IP address? What is the destination IP address? What is the type of protocol we use for this packet? Is it like HTTPS? Is it HTTP, TCP, UDP? You name it. And these analyzers are pretty useful for kind of monitoring network problems, right? Or the bandwidth usage or really other funny stuff. So let's just get into this kind of simulated packet analyzer. All right, so let's just declare a struct here called packet analyzer. Now, and in this struct, we have multiple fields. So don't worry if you don't understand structs. I've also made a separate video just for these important structs in Golang. So feel free to check this out as well. But what we got in this packet analyzer structs are now like certain fields, like total packets. Then we have like accepted packets. We have refused packets or like rejected packets, and then maybe also suspicious packets. So these are now our fields in our struct. So let's just create a function called analyze maybe, right? And this analyze function takes in one packet. So we just say P and then packet. Now, obviously we need to define this packet as well as a struct. So let's say type packet struct. And here we also have multiple type of fields for this packet. So obviously this is not a real example, right? This would be much more enhanced, but this is a really simplified version here. So we say id int, then we say the source IP, which for now is a string, right? Then we also have the destination IP, so DST for short, and then we maybe also have the size. Now, like I said in the beginning, we also maybe want to kind of analyze the protocol of the packet. So what we can do or what we can use is an enum for that. So we can say protocol and then the type is protocol. And then let's just declare this type alias here. So we say protocol is a string, right? And let's declare an enum where we make use of the const keyword, right? And the group. And then we declare here our protocols. So we say TCP is protocol. And then we associate this enum value with the string value TCP. Now we also got UDP, then we also got HTTP and HTTPS, right? So we got here a really simplified enum. Now let's just create a packet status as well, right? So maybe because we actually record here the accepted packets, rejected and suspicious packets, we also want to kind of return the packet status whenever we analyze a packet. Right, so this analyze function basically takes in a packet and then it returns a status whether it is suspicious, accepted or rejected, right? So this packet status obviously has to be an enum as well. And this time we actually make use of a type alias, which we call packet status, which is an integer in this case. And in here we define a constant group as well. And then we say accepted is packet status and we assign iota, right? So in the end, this is just null, right? So accepted is null. Then we also have rejected and suspicious as well, right? So rejected is in this case one and suspicious is two because we've used the iota keyword. Because like I said earlier, this iota keyword is using constants to generate a sequence of numbers. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now what we can do to just kind of stringify this accepted, rejected and suspicious, right? Because obviously we cannot stringify this value here. Let's just have a simple string function, right? So we say PS and then packet status, and then we say string, which in the end returns a string. Now, and this is pretty easy logic. What we do here is we make use of the spread kind of operator in Golang, right? Then we define the array in this case, it is of type string. And here we say accepted, rejected, and suspicious. And what we kind of do here with this declaration of our string, right, with this dot, 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 this kind of spread operator is not really a spread operator. It just tells the compiler to infer the length of the string array, right? And then we just say, at the position PS in this case. So really what we do is just we define an array of three values basically, and then we return the PS element, right? Which in the end, it really depends 
what you kind of use for in value. But let's just say we want rejected, right? Or the packet status is rejected. And whenever we call the dot string method here, we have rejected, which is one, right? Because iota starts at zero. And then we kind of access the first element of this string array here, right? Because we use the ps element. I hope this was clear so far. All right, so with all these kind of structs and enums, let's just define or get back to the actual logic of our analyze function. Now, first, obviously, what we want is to increase the total packet size by one, right? So we just say pa.totalPackets++. Now then, maybe we want to say that a specific protocol is suspicious. So what we can say, let's just say for the sake of demonstration, whenever the protocol is HTTP, right, of a specific packet, we want to increase the suspicious packets, right? Because HTTP is insecure and obviously we don't want this. And we maybe prefer HTTPS compared to HTTP. So let's just say PA dot suspicious packets plus plus, and then we just return the packet status, which in the end is suspicious, right? So we directly make use of the enum value here, which in this case is HTTP, and this resolves also in the string HTTP, right? Because we've defined a protocol as the protocol type, which in the end is just an alias for a string. And then we return the packet status, which in the end resolves into an integer. So let's just maybe also say that whenever the size is greater than 1.5k, we want to return rejected and we want to increase the rejected packets amount, right? For whatever reason, maybe to kind of just restrict whenever a kind of big packet comes in, right? We don't want big packets, we just want smaller packets. Now, in the end, we just return accepted and then we also increase the accepted packets amount, right? So this is our really simplified analyze functionality here, right? So let's maybe have a utility function called generate packet and it returns in the end a packet, right? And in here, we just make use of a lot of random numbers, right? So let's just create the protocols here. And in the end, this is a slice of protocols. And in here, we do have all our protocols, right? So we say TCP, UDP, HTTP, and HTTPS. And then in the end, obviously, we want to return a packet or a new packet, a generated packet, right? A really random packet, which in the end just really contains a lot of random values, right? So the source IP is obviously randomly generated, the ID, the size, and the protocol as well. And for the protocol specifically, we just make use of the length of protocols we've actually declared here. Right. So hopefully this is really clear. It's, a, it's just basically really a lot of random numbers concatenated into some kind of packet. All right. And with that, we can actually make now use of our packet analyzer. Right. So what we can say is we just iterate over 100 randomly generated packets or we generate 100 packets here. So we say packet and then we say generate packet, which in the end returns a packet. And then we want to use the analyze packet functionality here, which we declared up here, analyze. And this takes in a packet and returns a packet status. So we say the packet, right, which was randomly generated. And then the analyze function analyzes the packet and returns a status. And then we just print everything we see for the packet, right? And obviously the status as well. Now and then in the end, just for demonstration purposes, I just print everything we have in our analyzer struct as well, right? So the total packets, the accepted packets, rejected and suspicious packets. So with that in mind, let's just run our program, right? And whenever we run our program, we get basically everything we want, right? So some kind of weird IP that's obviously not correctly generated here. Right. And then we also have the size and the status, which could be suspicious, rejected and accepted. And in the end, with this printing functionality here, right, with this status, obviously this status is an integer, but why does it return a string? So as you can see here in our output, we actually see that the status is accepted and not zero, right, or one. 
And the reason for that is because we actually make use of the format identifier percent %s, right? And here we actually kind of insert the stringified version of our integer status, right? And because we've actually declared the string function here, which is here, and in the end, the interface stringer accepts this string function. So in the end, our package status kind of implements the stringer interface. And that is why we can use percent %s to kind of call this function, right, with this stringer interface, and then the value is resolved for this ps integer, right? Hopefully this makes sense. I think this is a really another important topic to understand these interfaces. And I've, by the way, also made a video about that, so feel free to check out this as well. All right, and with that in mind, we now have a really simplified packet analyzer. And we've actually made use of a lot of enum concepts here, right? And hopefully now you understand everything about enums in Golang. And if you also need a quick 15 minute refresh about the programming language Golang, then I highly recommend watching this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye bye.